in and get right into the conversation of oh, let me this person in. Get into podcasting. And I'm gonna do a quick, 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 quick overview. Okay, for those of you who did not have the opportunity to come to one, I'm not gonna go through all this extensively. I'm actually gonna put myself on a timer. Wait a minute. And uh, so week one, pretty much you got to know a little bit about me and my family and how I had a stroke at 25, of course, of paralyzed and all that good stuff and how now I can walk and I use my testimony to share my story through the power of podcasting. We actually discuss different myths and different things about podcasting, what it really is, what it is, and tips on how to build a successful podcast, how to start it. And we went into various different details where you can actually see how I did, what I did, and how you can actually duplicate what I do. And that was week one. Week two, let's go ahead and flip to it. Week two was systematically, we're bringing all that information home. We actually discussed podcast models. It's different between having a narrative conversation versus having a solo conversation versus having a guest versus having an ensemble cast. So speaking about what type of podcast you really want to have, how do you know your target audience once you start your podcast in different ways that you can monetize? And one of the biggest mistakes that I see not only podcasters make, but content creators and also entrepreneurs. I didn't put that here then, but I am seeing it now is that you do not. Let's go ahead to that one particular slide. One thing that I noticed is that uh, you do this. You do not have all your information in one spot. And so not having your information in one spot calls your audience to be very, very confused and they're not able to really grasp what you're doing and they're not able to opt in to what you're doing. And so I talked about that and how you should use the power of redirecting, send your people to one spot and then have links to redirect. Sorry, you guys got to let people in. <laughs> and you're seeing what I'm doing. Um, and so you have to uh, send them to one place and then redirect them to be able to go to your other places from that one area. So you don't have to say, because uh, I have a wellness business too. I don't have to say ctrwellness.com. I just say ctr, uh, ctrmedianetwork.com. They go there. They're going to be redirected to my Amazon store. If they want to purchase things from my Amazon store, if they want to purchase my book, they want to join my wellness whatever it is about me that they that drew them to CTR Media Network or the Tina Ramsey Show, uh, they will be redirected to those various places, but I send them to one place first, okay? And so what I see and what I did to myself as well was that I had four, five, six different websites, just confusing people <laughs> and spending way too much money. And so that's something that can actually save you money and help you in all aspects. Then week two, week three, we actually did a rewind of the previous weeks and we talked, reiterated what we already went over, answered some questions and all that good stuff. And then week four was the, um, we went in and we started discussing, understanding what your podcast should do before. And we actually went into the nuts and bolts of setting up your podcast. And I did it live where you saw me actually do it. And then we gave the grand finale where Ellen and I was able to reveal that we was able to put together without Derek even knowing that we were able to put together his podcast for him. And he is now officially a podcaster on CTR Media Network. So I encourage you guys to um, watch those previous videos if you're part of uh, CORE. Let me let some more people in. And so now what we're going to do is I am going to allow you to ask me any questions you have in regards to podcasting, because this is about you guys having me at your disposal and you being able to pick my brain, so to speak, in regards to what do you think a podcast is? Do you have a podcast? If you went through some of the steps to start your podcast from the previous classes, what is your hangup? Is it 
uh, your theme, your colors, your messaging, your branding, fear, going live, not going live, setting up. What is it? Lighting. So what you can do right now is raise your hand if you have a question, and I would love to hear what you have. Who's going to be the brave first person to uh, break the ice? Let me get some people in. Okay, we have a brave person. You can actually, if you want, you can actually come on and ask me real time. Jamie, where you at? You ask a question, let me see where you at. Okay. She said, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> okay. So the question is trying to decide if you want to just talk by myself or interview people, LOL. So first of all, do you currently go live or do a live right now? Do you currently do that? Have Do you have any experience doing that? Yes or no? I'm waiting. Okay. So going live is a fear to have a teleprompter. Okay. So for those of you who have the fear of going live, well, I'm going to answer her question first because she didn't give me a clear question, but I'm going to talk about those the, myself and in interview, okay? So when I first started out my podcast, I started my podcast out as a solo show. So basically I started with health and wellness and homeschooling. And I will talk about the ups and downs of homeschooling. I was also talk about a health and wellness journey. I will also speak about uh, the different things that I was doing with my children because I don't know if you guys know this, but I have a child that is de developing to the lady and have autism. So I needed an outlet in order to be able to talk to other people that was not my family, okay? It was therapeutic for me. And so that's what I did in the beginning. And it was a solo show. But I had no idea people was really listening or paying attention. It was just something for me to just share, let go, release, and de-stress and move on. Um, to my amazement, they were actually listening. Not only was they listening, they was coming for that advice, and they was following the suggestions that I had that worked for my family. After that deal, it scaled up from just homeschooling and wellness to uh, female health and wellness, which it was called Heal the Honey Pot TV, because I... That's what I do, feminine hygiene, natural wellness products, right? That's one of the tiers of what I do. And then eventually, people start asking me about being a guest on my show. The cool thing is, is that I just start interviewing people. And yes, I fumble in the beginning. You, If you go back deep enough on my, on my feed, you will see that I fumbled quite a bit. However, I use a system called StreamYard. If you're familiar with it, you can raise your hand. If you're familiar with StreamYard, if you ever heard of it, it's the most easiest software for people who have no tech experience, in my opinion. I have used all of them from Wave AI to uh, uh, Restream to Zoom to all these different little gadgets. What I have found is that StreamYard is the best in regards to when you're new and it's easy to maneuver for you. And so I uh, advocate for it. I'm actually a partner with them because of the user friendliness of it. I have experience with ones in my network from ones in their 20s all the way into their 70s. And they're able to use it whether they have knowledge about it or not. So it's very user friendly. And so that is what I used and I was able to transition into it. So if you're nervous about the conversation part, what I do is I ask for their bio and I tell them if, if per people are nervous, quote unquote, I tell them they can send in three to five questions. And based upon those questions, I'm able to build out once I'm having that conversation with them, whether it's live or pre-recorded, uh, the naturalness of the conversation. I have two ways that I do it, but mostly my show is just raw, relaxed, you know, they don't know what I'm going to ask them, nothing like that. But then I have some people that I actually have to prep before they actually interview on my show because they're really, really nervous. So that's one thing that I do. I see someone that says about, um, so I would say 
first try doing it by yourself and getting used to it and being consistent. Next, if you want to, you can start interviewing guests. But I would say start with people who you already know first so that the conversation will be more natural. Because if you're having your first conversation with someone, you don't know them, and you're trying to make sure that you do everything right, you're just going to be a nervous wreck. So try it with someone that you know that you already have some information about so they can feel more natural conversation so they won't make you uncomfortable and your audience that's watching you uncomfortable because I have saw it. Um, someone said going live is a fear. If you have a fear of going live, you do not have to go live. You can pre-record and then upload your video later to Anchor. And it is the same thing. You just have to give your audience what they want. If they're used to live videos and then all of a sudden you switch to pre-recorded, if you haven't been doing either or, you just need to make sure that your audience can adapt to it based upon how you give them the information currently, Okay. And so your analytics will let you know if they like it or not. And sometimes they will email you to let you know that, hey, I don't like it. And so basically you do a consensus of how the people feel. And then based upon that, then you can adapt your information. Yes, you can use a teleprompter. There is a great teleprompter that I use sometimes, like when I am doing commercials and I have to be on time for a commercial, it's called Bivu. Um, Curtis, my husband, if you have that particular name, you can type it in the chat. And it's relatively inexpensive. And what it does, you can use your cell phone or you can use your computer and you type in your script and you can have the script go as fast or as slow as you need to read it. And it has you looking square onto the camera and it looks, it don't even look like you're reading the screen. It, it's very natural. So when I'm doing commercials for my clients and I know I have to say certain things in that particular commercial, I'm an ad liver by nature. It's very hard for me to follow any script, but <clears throat> I read the script to make sure I hit all those points that they paid me to hit, okay? And so a teleprompter is a good thing, but until then, you can do this. What I used to do before I had a teleprompter, I would get like, a piece of paper and I would <clears throat> either type it out and print it or I would um, prop it up beside my computer right up under my um, computer eye so it can look like I'm looking right in the camera and I will be reading. So until you get a teleprompter, you do not have to go and purchase a $400, $500 big teleprompter in your house. You can just use the digital one and it does the same thing. I had both. And you don't even need to spend the extra money, not unless you're going in the studio and you're, you're building a studio and you're inviting your guests in. It will look better professional to have a teleprompter. Um, you said, I teach lives, yes, but podcast topics would be different. Why? You say you teach lives, but podcast topics are different. Why can't you do both? Okay, so what you're doing now, you don't have to go outside of what you're already doing because you already have a built-in audience. So what you have in a built-in audience, you can go ahead and give them what they want and also kind of segue them into whatever new topics that you have. But you don't have to change what you already is because they already love what you're already bringing to them. So now you just need to nurture that audience and you can grow together uh, with them. Someone said, how do you make yourself stand out from all the others? Number one, be yourself. And I know we hear that all the time. But you just need to be yourself, honestly speaking. I remember when I first started, and everyone, you can hear my country twang. It comes out on certain words a little bit heavier than others. And I remember when I first started going live in 2013, I felt so self-confident about the way that I sound. And I used to go, go on, and I used to be like trying to talk like a, a news anchor. It was not me. It was not me. And so the thing that I would tell you, first of all, to know that you're good enough just the way you are, and there's an audience just for you, okay? You're not for everybody, just like I'm not for everybody. So you're looking for your ideal audience, and the only way that they can find you, if you be yourself. And so uh, another thing that helped you stand out 
it's simple things like lighting. You can get this right here from Amazon for like $19, $20. Sometimes they have a coupon. Lighting makes a big, big difference. Let me show you something. I have lights on right now. Now let me show you how it looks when I turn it off. One of my lights. One of See the difference? When I turn off the light and watch when I turn it off. Lighting can make or break a show. No one wants to see someone uh, <laughs> um, floating in the darkness. Not unless that's your branding of what you doing. But people like to see you, and, and we're living in the era of 4K TV, 1080 pixel, and you don't want to look like you on an old box TV. You know how it was kind of grainy? So you want to make sure that your lighting is good. You want to make sure that your sound is good. I actually use, there are podcasts that use a mic and they, a Yeti. A Yeti is a very good mic, and they use a heavy where you can see it. But I also use, I use this mic. You don't see it, but this is called a snow globe. It costs about $40, $45. It picks up very, very well, inexpensive. I have had this for about six, seven years. And I mean, this baby had fell on the floor, traveled with us, and it's still going strong. I highly recommend this out of all the mics that I have ever had. Uh, this is a very good mic. So you need to have good sound, you need to have good lighting, and you need to have good topics and if you're a guest you're you're a guest or your show you need to have good guests coming on your show to make it exciting um and um you just be yourself and that's how you stand out and your branding help you stand out as well having an intro and outro song playing commercials during your show all of those things make you stand out also promoting your show online um, and making sure that you get that visibility so people can know that your show exists. All those things actually help you stand out above the rest. And maybe it's something that you do that is unique to you. Like people know me because of one of my taglines, which I didn't know I had. It's just natural to me when I come on uh, video, when I go places, I just say, hello, hello, everybody. I didn't know I do that. I didn't know. Like, really, I did not know that I do that. That is a thing that I do. And literally, I would go places and people like, hello, hello, everybody. Why are you saying that to me for? They're like, you say that every video. Literally, I had to go back on my videos and watch my own videos. And I was like, I do say that every single video. So it's certain little things or certain little quirks, different little things that we do that is endearing to our audience you may not even know that you do it some people actually watch my show not only for the content but they watch my show to wait until i laugh the weirdest thing they was like i know she's gonna do it they i mean they wait at the edge of their seat to hear my laugh now i don't think i have no cute laugh but to them it brightens their day so it's my laugh and it's my hello, hello, everybody. And so as you grow, as you build your show, it's going to be certain things that's going to make you naturally stand out. Sometimes you're aware of it. Sometimes you're not aware of it. <laughs> and once you figure that out, you make sure that you keep it going. And those are some things that help you actually stand out, okay? And also being on other platforms that actually promote you to get your show out there. Let me see. How do you... Okay. <clears throat> Michelle said, working on a podcast for my dad on mental health and substance abuse. How do we have callers call in live? Okay. <clears throat> Y'all know I'm from the hood. I mean, I went always in, in, in suburbs. I, I mean, I come from the projects. For those of you who don't know, I mean, I, I'm out of it now, but I mean, that's, my, that's where I came from. There's two ways that you can do it to have people call in. You can go and buy 
uh, the software like Blog Talk Radio, which is also radio too, but it's also a form of podcasting with audio only. And they have a feature that people can actually call in. Uh, you have to learn how to work the mechanics of the back end wall to actually pull them in. And then it's the, you know, the way that you kind of rig stuff up the, the people. Some people say the ghetto way. I just say it's the it's the uh, smart way if you want to get around it in a way. And when, Afro engineering. Yes, yes. You know, you know, thank you. Whoever said that, who said that so I can give you a whoop whoop? <laughs> <laughs> It's D. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, this is this is the way that she said it sounds so much better. Okay, so you can take your phone. If you're using your computer to go live, uh, you can take your phone and have them call you in, run your phone across the screen, your phone number across the screen, tell people to call in. When they call in, you put your phone on speakerphone and then you put it up to your speaker where people can hear. Um, that is the way that you can get for them to be able to call you in. But also we have on CTR Media Network where our guests or fans can come in on each podcast and they can click the mic and they can leave a clip. And sometimes they listen to the episode to see whether or not we include it inside of our show. But that's, everybody don't do that. So, but it's a way to get around that. Use your cell phone with a mic and use your computer and have them call in and it's the same thing you don't you know I mean you saved a lot of money <laughs> especially if you don't have the time and the learning curve to learn how to work that back end wall on blog talk radio there are other ones but you will have to google it to see some of them are expensive some of them are not but i say when you're first starting out and you are already invested in cameras you already invested in lighting, you already invested in the time and effort, logos, branding, all of that stuff, your time and effort. Until your podcast start bringing in some money, these are some things that you can do that's just as good. You just don't show that part. It just don't never let anybody know that you're doing, that you're calling that way. But they hearing it and they're like, oh, that's cool. They have people calling in not knowing that you're actually using your cell phone to do it. <laughs> okay, so it that's the way you can do a wraparound and you can start that ASAP. You can start that ASAP and many people do it. Most people do it, okay? They're just not gonna let you know that they do it, but they do it when they have these call-ins, when they're not on um, blog, radio and all of that. Um, someone said that's great information. Oh, and also when you open up the lines for people to call in, I need you to use a disclaimer. You need to, it's very good for in general for you when you have your podcast, you use a disclaimer. Um, but especially when you can't control the narrative, you never know what a person is going to say, what a person is going to do. And you just need to make sure that either you're going to have it running across the screen where you can pop it up and say, you know, the views of the guests or the sponsor or the blah, 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 blah. It's not necessarily the views of the Tina Randall show. That just protect you from a legal, a legal standpoint. Uh, keep that in the back of your head. And so uh, you just never know. Like I was watching a live uh, podcast show and he, he actually showed that he was using the phone. And I said, oh, he, he just let people know he using his cell phone. He didn't care. And it was actually clear literally the first couple people that he had on his uh called in they was fine that third fourth person that called in lord jesus that person came in just raising all kind of saying cursing and carrying on so much so that it made the host get agitated and the host start fussing on live so never ever ever when you are getting antagonized by a guest or a troll if you're opening up, because they open up different things when you start opening up a live line for people to come in and you don't know, you haven't screened them. Be quick to mesh in, in call, and do your best to not engage with the negativity. I know it's gonna be hard, but do your best not to engage with the negativity because keep in mind, you're doing this on the World Wide Web. And keep in mind that even though you delete some stuff online, it's never really deleted. 
And keep in mind that we as business owners, the first thing that corporate America or big brands or people do when they want to hire you to promote or come on your show or sponsor your show or whatever the case may be, they, all companies now do an independent social media checkup. They look you up online. And if they see you showing up online, they're not even going to look at what that person said to you to antagonize you. They're going to look at you as the host professional and say that you should have not allowed that person to get up under your skin, even though we're all human, but you are going to be to blame for that. And that can make you lose opportunities because you lost your cool live. And also that can be a way that people, uh, you want to go viral, but you don't want to go viral that way because that can mess up your business in the long run. And we don't want to do that. And so he just went out and now said to say, I don't even see him. He don't even have his show anymore. And so um, he still came up about a month or two afterwards. But then after that, his show is no longer. And so I don't know that he stopped just because he wanted to or because he had to because uh, these platforms have strict community standard guidelines and they feel that if you are breaking those guidelines, they will remove you without notice from Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, all these platforms. And usually, sometimes, depends upon how bad it is, once they remove you from one platform, they will remove you from all of them. And so if you don't already have your audience filtered in another type of way, then you lose your entire audience. So I will tell you this, every podcaster should have a way that you can let your guests and supporters information, whether it's by a jot form, whether it's by Calendarly, whether it's by the automated system, because if you run into any issue when you lose access to any platform online, it will not stop your business. You can pivot, and move to another platform, or you can pivot and create your own platform, and you can communicate with your podcast audience and supporters because you have their phone number, you have their email, you have their contact information, and you can let them know what you need to do. So if you're not currently collecting that type of information, it's very, very important that even with a podcast, just like we do a regular business, you need to treat your podcast as a business, and you need to co collect that information because you never know what can happen. A couple of years ago, I know you guys remember the Facebook blackout when Facebook went out. And for people who had all their business on Facebook and did not get emails, their business stopped for that time. They panicked. That can happen with your podcast as well. So the cool thing about podcasting, if you have your podcast distributed properly, you will still be on various different platforms like Google, Apple, Amazon, all these different other places. But the downfall of being on all those platforms, which many people don't think it is, is that Apple, Amazon, Google, uh, tune in, they collect the information from your following. You do not have access to that because in the United States, it's against the law for these companies to release that information under the privacy law. Now, in other countries, they do release that information. But over here, it's against the law for them to release that type of information. So in order to get around that, you need to make sure that you collect that information yourself so that in the case of something like that did happen, you're already prepared to do a pivot and you won't lose your livelihood or your business because you did not have contacts to stay connected to your audience. Um, because your audience is not only your community of support, but also it's your livelihood of survival. And so they need you, you need them. So make sure you collect that data because guess what? Data equals dollars. That's just how it is. Okay. Yeah, so y'all can go to Bivu. That is the uh, website that you can actually go and purchase uh, the teleprompter that I was speaking about. And it works on your cell phone and it also works on your uh, computer. Thank you for helping me out. Also, for those of you with everything going on with copyright infringement, I know a lot of you like to use music on your podcast. And music is cool. 
if you have the license to use it. Because what can happen is that you can get sued. There are real radio stations uh, that has software that's AI operated. So it's not humans listening to find it anymore. It's AI, which means AI listen at milliseconds that can hear what's playing. And so after it plays for a certain amount of time, it clicks the AI computer with the radio of a known artist. So say, for example, a lot of people like Beyonce, a lot of people uh, like different things. But say, for example, you decide to play Beyonce's song as an intro with, um, over your uh, photos coming in on your show. Um, and then that AI trigger it and you played it too long, then they gonna reach out to you for payment for using that song without permission. You have to get permission, but you can go to soundstrike.com, that's soundstrike.com, and you can actually get the license to use various different music so that you won't get slapped with copyright infringements. And if you do get hit with it, you can fight it and you will win the case because I did multiple times because my husband makes sure we have the license, okay? Um, she said a tip, you can download your license. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and so a tip, thank you, Sheila. You can download all your lives if you're already doing lives now. I say repurpose, reuse, redirect, and put it out to the world. So if you're a person who already done lives, you're a person who already done presentations for summits or, or conferences, you're a person who do uh, any type of Instagram live, whatever, pre-record it, upload it. What you need to do is take that information down and use it for your podcast. <laughs> what do you say? Done is better than perfect? All right. You can always get better. And Lord knows I use it because they give you some time. Um, uh, she said, uh, y'all got to have a whole Amazon store. <laughs> y'all a bit. Somebody, y'all got to have a whole Amazon store of recommendation and equipment. <laughs> yes, I do. I share with you exactly what I use because at the end of the day, I don't care if you know what I use. Most networks keep that a secret. But I mean, you ain't taking anything from me for knowing about the equipment. So go do go do you, boo. Get the equipment because I want your show to look good even if you're not with me at CTR. I love that Afro engineering. Okay, so um, Ellen, <clears throat> she said, I literally edit the after session in a circle talk that Derek does sometimes with the coaches and Dr. Tina, them and with, with their first few episodes. In the process of doing this for myself as well, repurposing is an easy. Exactly. Listen, repurpose, reuse, redirect, and put it out to the world because trust and believe is people who never heard what you did the first time. Um, let me go down. Any more questions? Do I have any suggestions having a lead magnet with freebies? Uh, some type of VIP club to collect content. Okay, so I use, it's a license. I don't know if I'm having the correct terminology, but it's a licensing place called AppSumo. AppSumo. I don't know if you guys ever heard of AppSumo, but it's an amazing <laughs> place to help you not only get a lot of software for a fraction of the cost, you can get lifetime uh, access to it, and in some cases, depending upon how the licensing that you buy the content, buy the uh, software, it includes lifetime updates and some do, some don't. But AppSumo is great because it provides a way for you to be able to utilize that type of software and not have to pay a monthly fee. And not have to pay a monthly fee because you pay for it all at one time and then you're done with it. And so I utilize uh, SendFox, which is made by um, AppSumo. They have different things that they make themselves. There are also things that AppSumo do not make, which is monthly, which is really, really good, which is called HoodSuite. That is basically an automatic system to help you social media posts, just like uh, and SendFox is basically a CRM. So you can actually send out emails, do all that different stuff like that. You can also create, uh, contact in 
you can also use, if you don't have it to do that right now, what you can actually use is Calendly and Calendly actually allows you to be able to ask up to 10 questions on Calendly and it's about what, $16.10 cent a month. And you can type in, um, you can ask for the name, email, bio, you can do, you can ask them about the budget. Like literally, I need to like drop mine in. Like I, before I even talk to someone on a call, I pre-qualified. You know, you know, the coach there that pre-qualified. I pre-qualify them to know, okay, what am I working with? Can I really help this person? Then once I already have a consensus about who a sense of who this person is, and then once I talk to them, then I can understand if I can help them or not. Um, realistically of what they're asking myself or my team to do. And then we have that conversation. But AppSumo is actually one of the most amazing places. And um, uh, it's some more, but that's the one that I use the most. Uh, Dee says she used AppSumo. And let's see, uh, for freebies, it's another um, website called PayHip, PayHip. P-A-Y-H-I-P.com. Now, it's kind of like you can use it to do courses on, you can use it to sell ebooks, sell products, sell courses. So how it's set up, you can either pay a monthly or pay it up front, or you can, um, how do they do it? It, it can drip out the content. It can drip out the content once the person pays. It's kind of like an automated system. And they have one way you pay upfront, one way you pay a monthly. And then they have one tier where you don't pay a monthly, but every time you sell something, they take a percentage out of your uh out of your earnings. So say for example, you sold something for ten dollars. They probably take one dollar or seventy some cent. I can't remember the percentage that they take, but it's a really good entry in if you're in that sweet spot in your business where you need to scale up, but you don't necessarily have the capital to scale up yet. And so, in the interim, you can only you only pay them when you make money. When you make money, and so. I use, I used to utilize it until I got all these systems and knew how to work it. And so um that's a real good one. And some other ones as well. Someone said, she would say, is there an industry standard when let's see, when a new podcast can start monetizing? Okay, great question. So when on not stream yard, on anchor, the requirement now, years ago they didn't have any requirements. You can monetize what they want on their platform, but in the last two years they changed it after the pandemic pandemic was over well it's not over but we we uh how can i say it we adapted <laughs> we adapted to it um and so they literally have a requirement of a hundred listeners on anchor before you can uh monetize so once you have a hundred listenerships they call it listenerships which is on Apple or whatever they call them downloads, but it's the same thing. Once you have 100, it will open up the monetization on side your anchor. They have three different sections. They have subscriptions. They have uh, where you can do kind of like a support. And the support is where you they already have selected amount of money that you can charge, which is nine nine cent, four dollars and nine nine cent, and nine dollars and nine nine cent. And basically, it's people who are your diehard fans, similar to Patreon, but it's going through the uh, the anchor, and they basically pay you that a month, and they take like four point five percent. Last that I checked, um, and then they have what they call um, R runs per minute, which is RPM runs per minute. So what is that? That is after you have your podcast episodes up and going and you actually get the email from Spotify, which is called Spotify for Podcasts, and I'm not Anchor anymore. They will actually send you an ambassadorship email, which I tell everyone, it usually go into your spam folder. So make sure that you look at your spam. I don't know why, but it usually go into your spam folder and it's time sensitive. So when they send you the opportunity to, to be an ambassador, you need to reply right then. 
because if you don't, you're going to lose the opportunity. And what and that opens up you to be able to monetize you with run per minute. So for every thousand runs or every 1,000 turns, kind of like spins with radio, kind of like with spins, you get paid based the money that they have said they're going to pay you. So some people get paid $10.99. Some people get paid $15.99. Anchor, when it was Anchor and Spotify, I got paid for both. So whoever goes to listen to the Tina Randy show on uh, on Spotify to get paid around about $15.99 per run per minute. And on Anchor, I get paid around about $12.95. And that's on average with run per minute, okay? I get an average of uh, 100, and, I got uh, over 150,000 uh, listeners just from that show on that platform, that's not including Apple and Amazon and all these other places that I'm at, just on Anchor, I have like 150,000 listeners, okay? And so what happens every time, some, this is the beauty of podcasting, every time somebody hit that podcast, it's a, just a good moment for me because the money keeps coming and I'm not even trying. Amen, hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. And they've been paying me and they send me my tax paper every year saying I got to give Uncle Sam some of that money back. But anyway, <laughs> it gets real, real when you get them income tax papers every year. And my aunt, excuse me, excuse me, lady, you're making money on, you know, you, you're making good money and you don't have to pay your taxes. But at the end of the day, <laughs> at the end of the day, I really don't care because it's like on autopilot. They keep up with it. I have never, ever had a problem with them. They pay you through um, Stripe. They pay you through Stripe. So you got to set up a, a free Stripe account and it's free and they pay you. And I have never had an issue. Never, ever, ever. Now, places like Spricka, Spricka.com, they actually pay you as well. And I'm going to be totally 100 with you. Now, out of all these years, they paid me a whopping a dollar and 79 cents. I said, girl, bye. Girl, bye. Mm -mm. This is not the platform that I'm promoting because the, the coins, the coins is not adding up. So I go, <laughs> so I stay where my coins is plentiful. Okay, so I love myself some Anchor. I love myself some Spotify. I also love um, working with StreamYard. So for the Average for, for once, you can do this right now for anybody that has StreamYard. I need you to go into your settings and you will be able to see uh, referrals, the word referrals. When you click that, it'll, it'll click down and it'll show you uh, your link. So you need to start sharing that link. It's basically your affiliate link to StreamYard. Now, when you are just a regular affiliate of StreamYard, which is open to the general public, you get uh, $25 per person that actually signs into a paid account. Now, the thing is the $25 you don't get in your pocket, you get it as a credit. So what happens is it starts paying for itself. And so I have times where I'm not even paying monthly because I got credits and the credits pay for it and I never had a problem with it. Now, being that I advance some, I'm more than just a affiliate of StreamYard. I am a partner of StreamYard. So it flipped this year, I mind you, because I had different offers, but I ended up going with StreamYard. It flipped from getting $25 credit to getting paid 25% per person every single month that they pay. Now, most people don't know that exists, but you know your girl do her research and I reach out and ask questions, honey. I was like, I know y'all got to have something better than this for me. All oh, these people I done sent over here, like my people, you know. And then they said, they looked at my podcast. That's why you need to be consistent and grow it. They looked at my podcast and looked what I was doing and then they offered that. That is not on their website. They don't even mention that, but that's just an inside tip that as you grow, then you reach out to their email and ask them for partnership at Simple Partnership. And then once you get that, then you'll start getting that residual coming in every single, and that's autopilot. You don't even have to worry about it coming in, it just come in, okay? So every time somebody click that link and somebody opt in, 
click my StreamYard link and they start a paid thing, that's 25% every time. And so the cool thing is most of these uh, platforms provide some type of affiliate program or partnership, but you need to take the time to look. The best place to look when you are looking for affiliate opportunities is to scroll down to the very bottom of every website and look. And you'll notice like on Amazon, they you go all the way down and that you'll see different tabs. You'll see different tabs and stuff like that. So you'll see affiliate, you see partnerships. You see most websites have that, especially if they're kind of like a big network. Yeah, have it. And then if it's like private, like mine, independently owned, then you, people use a reach out and ask. And then sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It just depends on what. That's why I'm in this inner circle and just up my up my husband. I just up my membership to that good old. That good old uh, pro so we can get up in that automation. Because <laughs> we need that good old, we need some our little automation that we have now. We need something robust. And over here, we need that. So that's why we upgraded today, baby, just for that automation and gonna benefit from all the other things. We were like, we need whatever automation. They, Lord knows we need it because we busted from the scenes with people reaching out. And I don't know about you, but I don't plan to be sitting around a computer all day. So I, while my automation system working for me, I listen, I'll be somewhere sitting on the island with some martini or something. I don't even drink martini well, non-alcoholic martini because I'm naturally bubbly. Alcohol calms me down. I'll just sit here like this. People are like, what happened to her? She's so calm. <laughs> so automation. So I encourage you guys to upgrade right now because I surely be, my husband and I be, and I, we can't wait to get in. My husband's talking about he'll drink for the both of us. I know you will. And you do. <laughs> okay. So anybody have any other questions um, in regards to, oh, Patreon is good. However, like I said before, they have this new thing called um, Buy Me Coffee. Have anyone ever heard of it? Buy Me Coffee. That's another way that you can monetize where people can actually buy you a cup of coffee. Sometimes you can change the pricing, sometimes you can't. That's another way. Um, you can also go into PayPal and you can actually create your own donation link, customized donation links. And when people want to donate, I send them that link. But what I do on certain links, I create, give them just a little healthy push. I have like $10. $25, $50, $100, and I have other. And they can put in whatever they want to do if they want to donate. And so that is great to do as well. Let's see, what else automation they actually have? Uh, I mean, monetization, because at the end of the day, you guys want to know how you can monetize that. It's so many different things that you can do to monetize independently. I will tell you this, for those of you who are looking to monetize YouTube, YouTube rules are changing so much, and I am not the expert on YouTube. We already have somebody in here that know all of this, so you might need to ask her these questions and write them down later. But as for me, YouTube has not been the best place in regards to monetizing so far. I am monetized there. Don't, don't get it twisted. I am monetized over there. But the best experience thus far that I have had is with Anchor and Spotify and then something there dealing with uh, creating my own independent links and also filtering my people, making sure that I have on all now how I do make money on YouTube and been making money on YouTube ever since 2013. This is how I make the most money on YouTube for me is making sure I always have something for them to opt in. So that description box is your money. Okay. And make sure you have clickable links. Just don't put www. CTR or whatever your website is because it's not clickable. People lazy. We lazy because we get all this technology so quick that if we got to copy and paste, we're not even going to deal with it. We're going to go to somebody that we can click and buy, click and buy. If they got to copy, paste, then click, then scroll. They're like, uh-uh, I don't have time. And so make sure the little trick is make sure that all of your website, whatever you put, uh, the links that you drop always have the HTTP because then they'll be able to click it 
onto your thing. So I have where they can click to my books, they can click to my donation, they can click to whatever it is that I want them to do, whether it's an event, they can click on it. And that's how I made the bulk of uh, my money on YouTube ever since 2023. I mean, thousands and thousands of dollars, literally. And also, if you want to start receiving free things and you're, I do not advise you guys to put, never, ever, ever, ever put your home address on a public website, you know, on YouTube. But I will suggest that you get a virtual office or a PO box. And these companies will start sending you products for you in hopes that you review it. Now, some people will just send it to you and some people will have a conversation with you, ask you for a review. I've been reviewing products on Amazon probably about, we're, we're, we're on about 10 years uh, on Amazon. And so that's money. I get a lot of free products and discount products. Well, years ago, it was discounted. Now I get a lot of free products and I turn people down. I don't take all the products. And so what I do now is that anytime I want to do any type of giveaway and I see people that they come in and they offer me different stuff, I review the product, I put it back in the box and then I do a giveaway in order to show appreciation for my audience. And so I did giveaways at the Power Podcast and I do giveaways doing live. People love free stuff. Now I didn't pay for it. It wasn't free to the manufacturer, but it's doing two things. It is building your community up, showing your appreciation, and also it's giving them a real person talking about their product. Now, I will say this disclaimer. Me, it took me a while to build this up because I refuse to lie. A lot of these companies want you to lie. And if someone is offended by saying lie, because when I was going, but my mama would not let me say the word lie. She would like that say story. You tell the story, but I'm grown now. <laughs> Don't tell I said that. <laughs> so, um, so what happened was being that I refuse to compromise because I do not fool and trick people. What you see is what you get. I'm going to be honest. And so to make a long story short, it took me a minute before I got traction a couple of years because I was going against the grain. And anytime you're going against the grain, you get people pushing back. But now, I built up a reputation where people know that I'm going to give an honest review. I'm not going to be malicious about their product if it don't work, but I am going to give them suggestions on how to make it better and why I feel that this does not deserve a four or five star review. Why I feel like this is not conducive to helping whatever it is that you say is going to help is not really doing it. I will give them helpful suggestions. Now they beat my door down because they want that advice because it's helping them more in the marketplace. So Amazon is a great way to make money in multiple ways. Um, and make sure you guys apply for the Amazon affiliate first, because that's for anybody. And Sheila is the best person to talk about this. But I'm just telling you the little bit that I know, the little bit. Amazon affiliate. And then once you build up your credibility and, and listeners, not listenership, your audience, your followers, then you can apply to be an Amazon influencer. And that's what I am now. I am an influencer on Amazon, which they give you a store and you're able to do all the things and be able to monetize whatever you market on that particular platform. And you can make money all those different times. Amazon got a whole lot of different ways you can make uh, income. You just have to take your time to go through all that stuff that they have on there. So, uh, oh yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's so good to have a better half. Okay, another place that you can actually make money, which is a free app, which you can utilize the Power Podcast, but it's using the power of audio. So it's not video, it's audio, is that you go and download the Wisdom app. The Wisdom app you can find in your Google or Apple Play Store, and you actually go live. It's more intimate. It mimics Clubhouse, but it's a more intimate. So you're speaking to one person at a time. You can organize excuse me, you can organize how long they talk, whether it's 10 minutes, 15 minutes, or 30 minutes, or an hour. And after the hour is up, it does a timer, and they remove the person off, and you can choose to let them back on. Now, um, I am one of the um, influencers that they went, they saw my show, and they asked me to come 
be on their platform. So they, I do earn, I don't, I earn gift cards. So every time I do a live, depending upon how long it is, I get paid a certain amount of wisdom coins. Once I get to a certain amount, every wisdom point equals so much. Once you get about 1,200 or different amounts of wisdom coins, it equals so many uh, points towards uh, gift cards. So you can pick between Target, Starbucks, Walmart, Amazon, and you can, it's real, it's real money. It's just digital, right? And so I earn because I come in like that. Uh, many of you who not, which how you can earn it is that you can um, create you those uh, links and say, hey, I'm doing my show over here and it costs X amount of dollars to be able to come on my platform for 10, 20, 15, 30 minutes. Or you can use it as a lead magnet to direct them to your podcast or direct them to your opportunity. I have made good money just going live on wisdom. Every time I go on wisdom, I, I, I get clients. Every single time I get clients, either for my network or for a book or something. I have never went on wisdom and have never got a client, someone to come on my show. It's a very, very good app, a very, very good. And it's free. It's free. So go over there and check it out. So do you guys have any more questions? We talking at 906. 906, do you have any questions? Yep. So what happens when um L pops up on here and act brand new and Trinice over there behind the ceiling fan? She got a ceiling fan with some balloons and she behind the ceiling fan on her fan. Maybe, maybe it's my ADHD. Trinice, you standing behind the ceiling fan. And the ceiling fan. Oh, there she goes. She jumped in front of her. Okay, there we go. Now, I just wanted to come on here and say thank you, thank you. I didn't get to say thank you last time where uh, you presented me with the podcast in front of everybody. I want to say thank you so much because I was not going to do it myself. And I think you and Elle knew that. So, you know, having people around you that's going to knock it out and, and encourage you to actually get content. Um, I can't thank y'all enough for that. So I'm blessed to have you as a podcast coach. And, you know, and I think we all in here blessed to, you know, um, with the expertise and the knowledge that you share and the, and the love that you give it with. So um, my question is, all right, you got the conference out the way, right? You got the network going. What next? Maintain and grow. Okay, so right now, the next thing on my schedule uh, is a rest, a vacation with the family, okay? Uh, my children have been patiently waiting, and so we're going to enjoy uh, a lot of the summer. We already have some plans to go to Florida and all this different stuff like that. I already told my friend, get the condo ready to be coming. You know, you is. You taking a break off of work. Girl, yes. So who yeah. made you do it? Who made you do it? Because you know, because you got ADHD like me, right? And yeah. your mind is three years ahead. And we just felt like we got three years of work to do before we can take off. So mm -hmm. Curtis made you do it. No, it's okay. Listen, listen. You know, it ain't even Curtis. He part of it. The children part of it. But with my mama, I my mama like, girl, if you don't sit down and take you a little break, you know it's going to mess with your health. And so uh, oh, thank you, husband. I forgot. See that squirrel brain, ADD? Mm -hmm. went, you know, let's see. He helping me. Okay, so the next thing that's coming out is our podcast, Revolution Magazine. So it's basically going to have like 100 different podcasters in it. It's going to be spotlight the ones on the network. Sheila, baby, you're in it, honey, boo-boo. And Coach Derek, you're going to be in it. And Ellie, you're going to be in it, too, because we're going to get yours done before we release it, okay? We're going to get yours done before it's out to the world, yeah. okay? Uh, so um, that, and then we're going to go place it in different um, studios so it can be able to help everybody that's in part of the magazine to be able to get, you know, leads and, um, visibility. So that is the last thing that I plan on doing other than maintaining the vacation. But uh, my parents got on me, my husband, my children, everybody around me was like, you've been going hard. When did you rest in the last three years? Like, and you need to rest because if you don't, either you sit down voluntarily or your body doesn't make you sit down. And I said, well, 
I already had a stroke before. So um, all these people telling me the same thing, and that it went from a gentle nudge. I think I said, okay, God is telling y'all to tell me. So let me pay attention. So I'm taking me. Now I don't even know how to take a break, Darren. I know you don't either. Because even when, just like you, I was in the hospital one time, hooked to IVs and everything. And I was like, oh, I can think of something that can help them, help my people. Let me show you what you we gotta learn to turn it off. And I and I'm gonna be honest, I still haven't learned how to do that good. <laughs> I'm still a work in progress. You don't get it. We're gonna get it. But you know, I mean, the thing is. Now you're gonna have the body concept, right? And you're gonna actually be able to like let it loose, turn it over to somebody. I know that's that's always the hardest part. I had a crazy call today, uh, and it, it was something similar too. Where, when it comes to the podcasting side, though, what parts you need to let go? What parts are you holding on to that you would advise somebody who just wanted to start one? You know. What, what, what's some of the, mis- not really mistakes, what, what are some of the things that you spent too much time on? For me, being that I am not a branding expert, uh, I know what I like, but I thought I knew some things. What I am is a promoter of brands, a brand ambassador, so I promote what's already there. So I held my branding and all of that too close. I would do everything. I would micromanage every single facet of my business, and now I'm letting go. I'm letting go because it's just so much that you can do. Um, but I would tell a new person, for me, I have I was very I was perfectionist, okay. And so yeah, I wouldn't let things go out until it was right. If I said, um, if I said if anything that was not crystal clear perfect, I would start over. And now you can see me saying, um, laughing, moving around. I had to learn to let that go and not to let go of the perfection of it. And I didn't have a phrase then, but I kind of like picked up your phrase, done is better than perfect. And I had to let that go. Um, and so that's what I do now. But and I still one. struggle. I still another, struggle. Yeah. And another one is uh, do what you do best, delegate mm-hmm. the rest. Amen. Uh, if you don't, you know what I'm saying? Because I think we're, and, and like I said, we I have these conversations all the time where people, are once you let go of I got to be good at everything and isolate on what am I really naturally good at, then we can build, right? And and I think a lot of people struggle. So I'm going to ask you, I know one of my biggest things was I uh, always wanted to be like the biggest or the first or this. That was my mindset then because everybody who I was around, you know, what we see, first black this, first black, somebody want to be the first something. Right. So they looking to be the first something that I'm the first black female with the well size 23 shoe that ever on the east side of the Mississippi that did like, no. it don't. So now what that does, though, is we I, I learned to stop trying to isolate myself into being unique and instead of learning how to identify the people that's going with me. Right. Mm-hmm. And so when I and what I really admire about what you're doing is you're solving problems subconsciously, right? Of what everybody has, because everybody has a oh, I got to be against them if we do the same thing. Versus, what can we get done together? Because of me, you, L, Sheila, Trinice, anybody else with a video on, because a lot of people don't have a video on. But if all of us got together and we said, hey, the car's out of gas. But if we all get behind the car and push it, the car get pushed a lot faster, right? And this is embarrassing. The reason why I was actually late here, did you know that I'm probably the only person that ever ran out of gas in the Rolls Royce? I literally ran out of gas today on the way back. I ran out of gas at 7.50. Anyway, they ain't got nothing to do with this, but I'm the only person that I got stuck on the phone and I knew I, you know, I knew I was supposed to get gas. I left here. It said 15 miles to empty. And next thing you know, it was out, and I was like, oh, my God, the gas. But it's too late. So I had traffic stop. Everybody was blowing. They hated me. But the reason I said that is because my ADHD kicked in, and I forgot what I was about to say, so I had to take it somewhere, right? But <laughs> one, of the, one of the biggest things is, though, that I used to always struggle with was um, not identifying the who first. 
Mm-hmm. Remember I told everybody to read that book, Who Not How? Because now you got to stop saying, how can I start my podcast? And start saying, who can start my podcast? Um, how can I manage this team? Who can manage this team? How can I create a product that's going to be really great? Who can create a product to be really great? And then when I realized that once you put that who in place, you just broker the who. You can broker. It's a, it's a phrase that my coach say. You can broker your who into eight figures. I ain't know what the hell that mean, meant until I realized that brokering your who means that if Sheila hypothetically would come in and be an operations manager at $150,000 a year for a $500,000 machine that I built, and now she can manage that for $150,000, I'm clearing $350,000 with, with now with all my time on a clean slate. So Sheila can manage 30, 40 people for $150K. And I can manage Sheila for the 350K, right? Because now instead of me reaching out and talking to this, I can put all the development into making her better than me. Like most of the stuff when they come in to coach, right? L is way, she handle way more than what I do, right? Um, but the thing is, is we got a better deal than that. She ain't getting the short end of the stick. But if I didn't identify L, right? Then we wouldn't have this program. So think about how many coaches that came on when she brought you in. How was that vetting process, right? You see throughout that process, was I involved? Did I aggravate y'all to do any of that? But L made it smooth. She also made sure y'all was prepared. She, you, she made sure y'all knew what audience y'all was going to be engaged with. She knew what she was going to offer, what she was, you, you, how it was going to sink and everything, right? So my question to you is... Are you vetting and are you looking for people to bring along to start taking over? Because um, I think you're too big than what you're doing right now. I'm giving you six months doing what you're doing. Now you're going to have to graduate to the next level. So who's going to be your next? Who who are you vetting right now to take over? I'm vetting several people at, as we speak, because this is not what I want. <clears throat> to, I love podcasting, but I want to delegate. I'm delegating and I had to learn how to let go because I got hurt a lot and I had to stop living in the past. And so right now, <clears throat> I'm happy to say that I am delegating. I haven't found someone that can actually, <laughs> I had a couple of VAs, Lord help them. They was like, she do all of this. I can't, I can't do this. It's too much. This is too much. So finding maybe not one person that can do it, but multiple people. And so I have different people doing different things now and making sure the thing now is that I need to do a person that is over all of them that can go through my processes so it can totally remove me that I will not have to be there until I need to. And so that is the place that I am at now. Um, I am betting. I am actively seeking. I'm currently looking for VAs uh, that can handle the the network side of running things. Um, I do have some people that are good, but we need more. We need more good people. And so so that I can totally remove myself and just come in when I want to. <laughs> just come oh, that's dope. That's dope. Come in when I want to. So what, what is... Um... The biggest, um, so right now, because I, I want to, I'm trying to pour into you too and just learn from you as well. Mm-hmm. Um, because your transparency is second to none. And, you know, people love that about you, right? You give, you motivate a lot of people. But so other than Curtis, right? Who's pouring into you? And they ain't talking about like, you know, I'm just saying from business from, you know, allowing people to be there. Because I know you strike me as the type that you're doing for everybody. And there's really no army of people that's standing behind you. So what, what, where do you go to get poured into? Or where do you and Curtis go to get poured into? Well, um, <clears throat> I have my mentor, uh, Sheree. I have another person, Dr. Liddy. I have... Uh, Another person, Shana, I have different people that actually pour into me. Now, they are on another level for me that I can look up to them. I have people that's level-wise 
<clears throat> and I have people below. I always have people below, I have people in the middle, and I have people up. And right. so for me, they're helping me, but I'm extending because now some of them have taken me as far as I can go. Like one of my mentor and coaches said, Tina, I took you as far as I can take you. You, you done as uh, executed every single thing. Different groups I'm in, I go to learn. You guys have to excuse me <clears throat> because I have good old South Carolina allergies. And so different places I go to learn and I try to be incognito because I really want to learn. And then they realize I'm in there. Oh, did y'all know Dr. Tina? And then all of a sudden, whoosh, everybody, 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 everybody. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I did not come to speak. I did not come. To, I came to learn, to learn, okay? And then you find yourself the one that everybody looking to when you need to look. So ironically, the inner circle has been something that is providing me with what I was looking for my husband, where I don't know everything. He don't know everything. And I'm finally in a, in a place. That's why you can't get rid of us so even if you wanted to. Because I'm like, oh my God, I've been praying for this. Oh, they know way more than me. Yes. And I can just stay in my genius zone. I'm, I don't feel like I have to go out and try to help them with business. Uh, uh, I could just focus on the business of podcasting. And that's what I love in homeschooling. That's it. Oh, and yeah. I, that's what I love. Mm -hmm. And what Elle said was dope too. Some coaches are trying to hold on to you for a lifetime. Because they'll try to keep you as student. Mm -hmm. and, and as long as they feel you beneath them, then they can have control to push down and things like that. And they don't never want you to end up better. They don't never want you to do none of that. So I think that's definitely a reason why, you know, I, I think that's genius. That, that's smart too. So, um, so you got the magazine mm -hmm. and you knocked the conference out. Mm -hmm. I saw that the pictures was dope. So now the people that came to the conference, what you doing with them next? Some of them actually is starting their podcast. We're actually interviewing them, a lot of them on the network right now. Um, some people, they're looking for different things in regards to visibility because I help people maximize their visibility online through the power of podcasting. So every business owner that was there uh, wants something a little bit different. Some want interviews, some want to be in magazines, some want to be in blogs, you know, and some want to have their own podcast. So right now, determining whether they want a podcast that transition to television. And if they do, then I finally found someone that uh, actually can teach TV, which is the Telly Award winning um, host, which is Kim Jacobs. She's one of my podcasters. Actually, I pulled her to the side and I said, listen, we need to collaborate. I know you came to me for help, but now I need help from you. And she was shocked. She was like, you need my help? I'm like, girl, you sitting on the whole telly award. Yeah, I need your help. Like, yeah. And so I talked to her and I was like, listen, normally I don't ask, but I'm in the season of asking you shall receive or ask and then you know what you need to do next. Because I can't keep doing everything. People, Because I train people how to go to TV. And I, I don't want to do that anymore. So I said, I want you to do it. And then that bring business to you. And it bring business to me. And so I send everybody to her in order to uh, build a TV show from scratch, which also transition into podcasting that is TV friendly for Roku because we have a Roku channel. And so I know that once they get through her, that's going to uh, it's going to be right for TV. We don't have to rework anything. And so that is. So right now, um, like you said, delegating, sitting back, watching, asking, and putting the right person on the right duty. Not asking people to do something that's outside of Jean's song. That is something that she was already doing. She's already mastering, and she already proved herself because I see all of her work, mm -hmm. and she has all this credibility. And she and I worked with her for a while, being on my network. So some things, some people, even if they come to you as a client. You start seeing and you work with them and realize that, hey, this is a person that I need to collaborate with if they see the vision the way that I do. And so she does. And so that's why I did that. Uh, in regards to marketing and branding, I pulled in uh, uh, Sheree Moore from She Trucking. 
I mean, she got like 30,000 women in trucking. Um, she been on National Geographic. I pulled her in and I'm like, I need you to do that and train. Like I pulled in different people that I see that do certain things yep. that I was required to do that wasn't my gene zone, but I was doing it because I didn't have anyone else. And it is, oh, and engineering, running the shows back then when people see like the pop-ups and all of that. It's somebody back there doing that, right? I'm not just a podcast host. I am a producer of shows. So I used to be back there producing, getting people ready. Okay, you have five minutes to go to commercial. Five minutes, five minutes. Okay, three, two, one, we're back. You know, I was back there doing that. So now I have somebody else doing that. And so I'm doing it slowly but surely, but it's it's hard finding the right people to do things. So right now I'm learning to set back and let God reveal to me who it is and not necessarily who I think it should be but people reveal to me by their actions and their work and being consistent that they're the person that I need to reach out to. And so, so far, so good because I'm letting go. I'm letting go. I'm Because yeah. Shanice got, got some help over there. Look, you see, you see, look, who that sticking their tongue out? Who that, who that Shanice sticking, they came in here sticking their tongue out? Yeah, I know that's Landon. Yeah. Yeah, I'm putting them a <laughs> Nah, that's dope. That's dope. So um, I was looking at something, too, that YouTube has taken over as the number one network in the world now, right? So mm -hmm. TV, the way that we know it, probably has a lifeline of probably like, I, I, I wouldn't get cable, regular cable TV 10 years. Is cable TV is literally going to be like the house phone. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to go in one location to sit down and watch TV. Right. What, what they're going to do is they're going to go and get an episode and airdrop it if they got the cry phones to each other and then sync it and watch it the same time or, you know, Android share or something like that. But what I like about it is we're not thinking ahead. You got three levels of people. Right. You got the creators. The creators are the ones who develop the technology. Then you got the users. Right. Who comes in and use the technology to build. So you got creators, you got builders, right? So the creators create the stuff to, to you know, will, and then most people take a business, they'll take the technology and use it to help somebody, right? Mm -hmm. And then you got the consumer. That's the person that just watches the TV all day and then they go work and pay bills and they consume all day, right? But with those three levels, you're going to have a different level of wealth, a different level of control, different level of power that's actually built. So what YouTube is doing, is and, and people are too busy looking at Amazon, they don't realize probably in the next 10 Amazon will probably get creative with some more stuff. But YouTube is taking over media, and what's happening is we're looking at these as podcasts. I'm looking at these as the beginning of the new CNN, the beginning of the new ABC, and those episodes is on these podcasts. See what we what we're not looking at is when we watch a person with a podcast episode. That ain't nothing but Oprah, Ricky Lake, and all of that coming on back to back in the network back in the day, right? So now when you get a podcast episode or when you get YouTube, which is going to be the overall global network, you're going to actually have networks within YouTube now. And these networks are like the CTR network, media network. And, and like the, you know, uh, what, what, what my boy got? My boy got uh, Sleepers for Suckers. You know, he got Social Proof Network, right? David. And so now what people are going to start doing is like having the pot. So you're ahead of the game, whether you know it or not. Right. And what we're seeing is a new boom and a new wave because the radio AMF is gone. Podcast and radio is coming on now. Right. But then um, you got YouTube that's taking over television to where nobody's going to have a TV hanging up no more. I give it 10, 15 years. Y'all think I'm crazy. But I'm trying to tell you, all people are not going to be going home, sitting still watching TV. So when um, the messaging gets out of why they need to start a YouTube channel, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking a lot of people don't understand the power of it, right? They don't understand, or, and not just YouTube, but your own podcast. So that's literally your own Harpo network from Oprah, because we're going to see these people, like how much Mr. Beast make a year? Just from like YouTube, $54 million? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say right about average. I'm on 60 if you estimate. Yeah, so Mr. B is averaging, like, I think when I looked at it, he made $54 million in 2021 on YouTube. Not now, because my son watches. I mean, everybody's probably at $75 million now. 
I'm yeah. probably making you over 75 million now, right? But the crazy thing about it is he has more viewers that come to his channel than the who watch than the people who watch the Super Bowl. He does. So, like what he said, why go pay three million dollars for a Super Bowl commercial that they're gonna play once during the Super Bowl? When you can pay me two million dollars and I can have it over and over in the middle of my biggest videos and literally started dominating using that same network. Those are the new commercials now. There's going to be inside these podcasts, inside these YouTube pages, inside of the thing. So it's you're at the beginning phase of this. When they say YouTube is going to be the first 10 trillion dollar network. That's ridiculous. I don't know how much money circulating in this world, but you're talking about a $10 trillion network and Google owns YouTube. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? So I ain't telling y'all to go get some long-term stock in Google, but what I'm telling y'all is there's going to be no way, you know, you're going to have prime and you're going to have all of them trying to like buy up all the movie. Theater. I think prime bought AMC and all of that. Right. Or Amazon bought like, a lot of those movie theaters. So now, yeah. Now what YouTube is going to do is basically just kind of like Netflix. You're going to have YouTube premieres. You get what I'm saying? So, yes, get y'all podcasts. Get on YouTube. Get on all the podcast channels because that's going to be radio. So if you want your radio, if you want your song on the radio like back in the day, don't go and try to do it the way that they did it. She's telling you a way to monetize from it. And you're getting in on something early because the earlier you get in, that's how you get to blow up. Because if y'all could have got on YouTube 10 years ago, how many people would have did it? If you know what you know now, how many people would have got on YouTube 10 years ago? Amazon back in the day. And, <laughs> exactly. How many people would have started a podcast on Spotify, on, you know, uh, Anchor and all of that when you, when you first, you know, heard about them? So now y'all got a chance. And the thing about it is time ain't going to slow down for us. It's just going to keep going. So get in, take action, do all of that stuff right now. And uh, I just had to come in and just, you know, put some sprinkle on whatever you had going on because I wanted to thank you. But that's pretty much why, where I'm at. But it was my pleasure. And you're right. That's why I'm like sounding the alarm as much as I can and utilizing not only teaching at your platform, but letting people know, everyday people, this, everything is shifting. The wealth is shifting, okay? It's going to be new millionaires, multimillionaires because of this digital era that we're living in. And you have to create a digital imprint, period. There's no way around it. So you need to have a digital imprint dealing with your business. You need to have a digital imprint, meaning you need to be on social media. You need to have a social media presence. You need to utilize the power of podcasting. Since I've been into podcasts and I've already seen how the platforms is changing vastly, almost every other month, something is different. Something is changing. Uh, names change. It's changed from Anchor to Spotify for podcasters. And I saw the shift and I told people three years ago, I said, listen, come on into podcasting now. Now it's a little bit harder to get in. If you get in, it's harder to monetize. They're going to make it even more harder because more people are starting to do it. And now you're absolutely right in regards to YouTube because now YouTube is trying, well, not trying, they taking over to call themselves a podcasting network. So they're in the making of creating podcasts. And so they started doing that maybe about six, seven, eight months ago because they let me come in as beta. So they have like the big ones like Mr. Uh, Beast. Uh, they, they have, uh, you know, smaller content creators as well, like myself, but ones who they notice that's doing consistent content and making an impact, whether small, medium, or large. And so what happens is, is now they start to categorize because I can see the back end. They're categorizing the shows, just like you said. So similar to Netflix, where you can go and see sci-fi, you can go and see reality, yeah. you can yeah. go and see science, um, education, food. That's what they're doing now on YouTube. Now, currently, a podcast is only considered a podcast when you're on podcasting platforms like Apple, Spotify, Anchor, um, 
Google, all of that. But they're changing the narrative of what podcast is. Right. Video has never been acceptable in the podcasting environment. We're just starting to accept it now. And it's still controversial. People going back and forth. I went to Podcast Summit in Atlanta um, in April with Charlemagne the God and the Housewives of Atlanta. And people going, it was a person on the panel going back and forth with another person about video is not no podcast. And this and that. And I was like, who told you that? You got to let go. I know your whole platform is uh, audio, but it's transitioning into video because people connect better with video. And Steve Harvey doing it. Watch the money. Steve Harvey, Sherry Shepard, Oprah Winfrey, all these big headers don't need any more money. Why are they doing a podcast? Because they know it's here to stay. Okay. So watch it. And I'm telling all of us, Oh, yes, they were there. Uh, uh, 85 South was there. Uh, yes, all of those. So I actually saw all of them. Michelle Obama actually have her own podcast as well. So don't be afraid of going live. Don't be afraid of uh, putting up information, putting out information, because this is the season. This is the winter season. Start now. This is it. Because the window is closing. The window is closing, and you need to position yourself now. And so... I um I love it. I love what I do. And thank God I'm finally to the place uh, where I have people doing things for me, but I want to do it to a wider extent where I'm no longer the CEO anymore. I put somebody else in the CEO spot. <laughs> and I'm and they're like, who is he? Oh, the CEO. This, the acting CEO is this person right here. <laughs> I still own it. Who was there the CEO? You know. Say own, say you still control it. You're going to be the chairman of the board. They'll control it, but yes, I'm looking forward to the time where I put someone else. I mean, when you had that uh, the guy from Eight Figure on your podcast, and he was like, "Yeah, my CEO says it." I said, "Well, I never even considered that having another person CEO in my business. Hmm, that's a thought." Yeah, well, <laughs> like, to get around it. Like, if you're in a meeting with people who are chairman of, of their boards. Mm-hmm. Don't no, think different, but no, I want to thank you, thank you, thank you so much for tonight. Um, and every other night, and you know, I just wanted to say, Come give you your flowers, get Curtis his flowers. I don't know if Curtis won't be giving him flowers, so I'm gonna give you, I'll give you a beer, Curtis. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> give him a bucket of Curtis a beer, and then uh, you know, we're we, we gonna give you your flowers. I'm gonna drink a beer with my boy Curtis. I can't drink no more, Curtis. So the doctors uh, told me that I got it. I I can drink recreationally. I thought I was doing that, so I guess recreation is a little different. Um, but <laughs> I thought recreation meant fun, so I thought <laughs> never mind. Anyway, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Because I know I got to start this nine forty five uh, Zoom call with my staff in India. Uh, which is like eight minutes. So I ain't on here to try to kick y'all off or nothing. Um, but I know that if I start that one, then it's going to automatically end this one. So, um, you know, we just wanted to come say thank you. Make sure that y'all leave her a review. Whatever you do. And if you done left two reviews from other calls, that ain't this call. There's a whole nothing, right? Um, and, and just like what she did, oh, call was amazing. I definitely, them ain't gonna be them. So if you're gonna do that one, just don't do no review. But um, <laughs> if you're gonna say something about what you learned, hey, she answered my question about this, and I was, you know, blah, blah, blah. Those are good. So please give some video reviews. And remember, we're tallying who leaves video reviews all the time. Um, so we, we know who's proactive, we know who's just doing them when they can do them. But, you know, you got to be a team player. So we love y'all. So what you want to leave them with, Doc? Me? Yeah, yeah, because we ain't used to hearing ladies get called Doc, right? Doc is usually a dude, but, you know, since you Dr. Rob um, Tina, we just going to be like, hey, what's going on with you? All right. Well, you caught me with food in my mouth. I'm sorry. Oh, man. Okay. So I just want you guys to walk in your purpose. Don't be afraid. Realize that you're in the best place ever. This area, I mean, this group has really been a life sent for me and my husband because we're finally in a community not only where we can give, but we're being given information. It's nothing like having your cup filled. So 
I don't know if you saw Derek's uh, video during lunchtime, but um, you better go ahead and, and upgrade now because the price going to change dramatically. So get grandfathered in. So when he said that, we was like, oh, 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 wait, oh, 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 play the card. So I love being here. I love being able to help you guys. Make sure if you have any questions, you can reach out. If you guys actually purchase the, the book from Amazon, leave a review because that actually helps me as well. And um, when we start our courses, you know, from when I have my own group, we're going to actually be going over this. This is going to be your textbook. We're actually going to be going through it. You're going to go through it bite-sized pieces. I love questions. There's no dumb questions. Um, I want you to ask me whatever it is. If I have the answer, I'm going to give it to you. If I don't, I will research it and get back to you. But this is your time to shine. And I love what I do. So thank you. And Derek, thank you. Thank you, Ellie. Thank you, Tanisha. And I can see you now in front of your banner or, or your background. Now I can see you. <laughs> so, so it's nice to see you. <laughs> and thank you, Sheila. And it's my pleasure. Make sure to uh, follow both of their podcasts and listen to their podcasts to give them support so that uh, it'll help with them in monetization. I know we don't want to leave no coins on the table. So I see. <laughs> All right. So I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great, amazing rest of your night. And Derek, go ahead in and get your rest. And I can't wait to do so I can actually say I'm taking a little break, which is I different. Know. Definitely got to have one. So yeah, I got to jump right on this call. But uh, appreciate y'all. Y'all be blessed. Y'all be good. And most of all, start your podcast. Don't mm -hmm. be All right, y'all. Bye. Bye-bye.